Hi everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to discuss a question that I've seen asked a lot, which is about which of the tier 5 budget armors to run in your raids, between the Corrin from Prapor and the Gajel from Ragman. So stick around, and let's get going. Alright, so the Gajel, or the Corrund. Now, I've been asked this question a lot by players, and it's quite an interesting one, and I didn't give it as much credit as it was worth, I think, at the beginning, and that's why I really want to make this video, to do a proper deep dive breakdown into the two, and decide which one's better for us, because it's going to depend on the player. Now, what this is going to be is a perfect follow-up to the broader armour guide that I did, because what we're going to do is implement in practice the principles that we talked about then to come to the best decision. But before we jump into the main topic, I just wanted to go quickly through why level 5 is an important tier in terms of armour, and why it's run routinely by later stage players. You see late stage players run level 5 armour all the time. And this is because it defeats low and mid tier ammo, and so if you're coming against scavs or new players, they will struggle very hard to kill you using thorax shots, which is where the bulk of fully automatic fire happens. Obviously a headshot will still kill you, but thorax shots are common and a level 5 armour is a way to get rid of most lower and mid-tier rounds. Now, it's got a great price to efficiency ratio because as you think, level 2 and 3 are very, very cheap. Level 4 is a bit more and level 5 is quite expensive, but it's nowhere near as expensive as level 6. And there's only a couple of level 6 armors anyway. But in terms of price to efficiency ratio, if someone's got really good ammo, it's probably going to destroy the level 6 anyway. And so level 5 is sufficient to defeat most decent rounds, or at least give you a good chance, even against some, some good rounds. And with headshots being a thing, there's really not a lot of point economically to move up to level 6, because if you can just get shot in the head and die anyway, then your armor wasn't even used. And so you want to be using something that you're, is not going to break the bank every time you run it. Right, so let's just jump into game quickly here. So the cheapest entry point into tier 5 is clearly the Corrund and the Gajel. So the Corrund here is 100,000 from Prapor, and the Gajel is 123,000 from Ragman. Now there is a bar to trade for two gold chains, which are about 30k, and three coffees for about 20k, but that ends up being like roughly the same. Um, the annoying thing about getting access to the Gajel for cash is that you have to complete Ragman Task Supervisor and be at level 3 before you can buy this, whereas the Corrund you just need to be level 3 uh, Prapor, which is a bit easier. Supervisor is quite a long way down his quest, and interchange I find quite annoying, so it can be quite difficult. So the prices are quite similar, right? We're talking 100,000 versus 125k. Right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to jump onto the wiki. I actually have the ballistics page bookmarked on my Google Chrome because it's just so, so good. So in ballistics, we want to go down to armor penetration tables. I use this table continuously. This is no food after midnight's penetration table, which is just absolutely fantastic. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look about um, between the different tiers of armor. That's what you see at the top, one to six, and then a one to six in terms of effectiveness of the penetration of the rounds. So if we just pick two staple bullets for a second, let's have a look at B. BP. So this has got BP here for 762, which is a 6 against everything underneath level 5, and is a 5 against level 5 uh, armor. And then you've also got M855A1 up here, which is very, very similar. So it's a little bit less penetration, but it's also a 5. Now, what does a 5 actually mean on this? It means that it penetrates a large percent of the time initially, often going up to 90%. So that means that the initial shot is likely to penetrate it was quite likely to penetrate and then because of the damage that it's done to the armor then subsequent shots are quite likely to penetrate as well so if we look at veritas's battle buddy which is another tool that's really really useful to actually get an idea of what the percentage chances might be and we look at level five armor i've got a little list here of some of the classic rounds so 762 bp that we just talked about is 55 percent on shot one m855 a1 for 556 is 24% uh, chance on shot one. SP6, which is for the VSS and the VAL, which is the second tier of ammo, is 24%. LPS, which is these big bullets here. This is all, uh, one of the most in rounds. And that's a four against level five uh, armor. And that's 18. 366 AP, which is that new round they put in, um, is 18%. M80, which is the staple of the 762 NATO class, is 13%. 545 BT, which is the budget round for the 545 weapons here, is 1.2%, and AP-20 shotgun slugs is also 1.2%. Now, those have much lower penetration, as you can see, so 37 versus 43, and this makes all the difference against level 5 armor, and this is the reason why level 5 is actually quite good, right? Because like, if you look at BT here, for example, BT is kind of a staple round. If you're not willing to spend the 1,000 rubles per shot on the flea market or do the prep or trade to get either BS or Egolnik, then you're going to really struggle against somebody with level 5 armor. You're going to have to shoot them a lot. 
Now, the interesting thing is this is talking about precisely the very first shot that you receive. So we've got a full health current here and a full health gel. And so the very first shot that these are going to receive, they will have those percentage chances on them. Now, the issue is, is that as soon as you get hit, your durability is going to go down and that percentage chance is going to increase. Increasing percentage chance of penetration from durability losses is quite important. So if we run another experiment uh, on Battle Buddy again, because it's very, very handy, if we look at two thirds of the armor, so with the current we're talking about 30 and with the gazelle we're talking about 40 ish 40 42 something like that so at two thirds 762 is 91 m855 is 54 sp6 is 54 percent as well lps is 45 366 ap is 45 percent m80 is 36 percent 545 bt is 13 percent and ap20 is also 12 percent so very very low still on those two but you can see the amount has crept up quite a bit now this is an important point because this is where the material comes in and the durability starts to matter of these pieces of armour. So there's quite a few misconceptions about armour. The first one being that the very first shot it protects you the same. So level 5 armour on the shot 1, doesn't matter if it's you know the, the massive gem 4 with all of the stuff on it or it's the current, the very first shot it will protect you exactly the same between both. The only difference is that the durability will decrease more for those with the bad uh, material and it will decrease less for those with the good material and those that just have naturally high durability points will also work quite well. So biggest misconceptions about durability is that all durability is the same, it is not. And also the fact that durability and repairability are the same, which they are also not. So let's look at durability first. So between the Corund and the Gajel, the material is bad for both of these armors. So with the Gajel, we've got uh, ceramic. And so what that means, right, I'm just going to flick back again to the wiki. So there's actually another page, which I think is underused on here. So if we go above the table itself and move up into the durability section, there's this grid here, right? And so if we look at what, what this means, this destructibility factor means that when a bullet is hitting that armor, how much it will reduce the damage that it says in this column here. And so in terms of destructibility, ceramic has got 0 0.8 and steel has 0 0.7. So if we switch back to our armors here, so our gazelle here has got 65 durability. This means we then divide that by 0 0.8 and that gets it to 81, and that's its effective durability. The corund on the other hand, we've got 45 durability, divide that by 0 0.7 because it's made of armor steel, that gets us to 64. So 81 versus 64. You get 25% more armor from the gazelle overall. However, the one point that I would note about this is I don't think it's as important as people think because they're both low armor. And so the first shot, as we said, is really what matters. Now, if you've got a big round coming in, that's going to absolutely destroy your armor big time. And so the subsequent penetration chance is going to be much, much higher regardless, right? Imagine if you had two pieces of armor, one had one durability and one had two durability and they're both level five and any bullet would zero them, then it literally doesn't matter that one has twice the armor of the other, right? And so I think there's some of that effect in this. Because of that fact... I would personally, on price alone, and just based on these facts alone, I just go for the Corund because it's cheaper and you're not really caring about subsequent shots that much if you're buying budget armor. You want to survive one big shot to the thorax and not die and have it save you. And that's really what you're buying it for. And on that basis, I'd go for the Corund. However, there are some other factors that might make us reconsider. Now, on to misconception number two. This is about repairability. So just because both of these are bad in terms of durability does not mean that they're both bad in terms of repairability and this is actually normally where the misconception comes in is with armor steel because people say well armor steel repairs really well so it must be really good on durability too which is not the case as we've seen right it's the second worst it's the next worst one down from ceramic people really think that this armor is is good when it isn't now the, diff the big difference between ceramic and armor steel, though, is the repairability. The repairability of armor steel is very, very good. And people know this and see this because when they try to repair with prep ore, it hardly costs them anything and it repairs nearly to full health. The ceramic armors, on the other hand, are not like this at all. And anybody who's run any ceramic armor will know this, right? You can only really repair them two or three times, maybe, before the durability is down to two thirds, maybe even a half of what it was originally, which is very, very tough. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I want to just flick back to our off Tarkov screen and we're going to grab up this here, which is a picture that I want to show you of all the different armors being repaired. So this first one is the Gajal and we're talking about Prapor versus Mechanic. Now, you can see it costs 23,000 and 60,000 respectively to repair with Prapor Mechanic, which is extremely expensive. And this gets it from to 52 and it gets it back to 57 out of 65 so we're paying a lot and it doesn't repair that well 
So if we move along to the current instead, we can see this gets it back to 44.46 for 10,000 or for 22,000, 44.69. Now there's really no point repairing with Mechanic here because it goes so close to 100% using Prapor. So it really costs 10,000 with Prapor. And we have a choice here with the Gigel is either to do 23,000 or 60,000 with Mechanic, which is clearly a lot more expensive. Now this is one of the reasons why people don't like this armor and think that the Corund is way, way, way better. But I don't think it's nearly as clear cut as people think. So just before we move on, whether you should repair the armors with Prapor or Mechanic for the Gigel, I think it's clear choice to repair with Prapor, to be honest with you. So with Prapor, you purchase one from Ragman 123, you repair it twice at around 23,000 rubles, and this gets us to an average, and then basically you just throw it away, right? So you've got an average there of 56,000 rubles. Now, with Mechanic, I think that this is just not worth it, right? So you purchase it for 123. You might be able to repair it four times, let's say with Mechanic instead, for 59. And I know it goes down slightly, but we're just making an estimate here. But this is still 72. Now, the repair cost with Mechanic is actually more expensive than the overall average cost with Prapple. So no matter how many times this could be repaired, this number will never get lower than this number. And so I think it's just better to repair with Prapple and throw it away because Prapple is like literally a third of the cost to repair. And so it's just not worth repairing with Mechanic. Now, where this starts getting a little bit complicated is in terms of insurance. So we've already seen that repairing these Kajels is quite expensive, even though it can be done, and it's not too bad if you use Mechanic. Whereas repairing the Karuns is very, very easy. Now, the problem with this is around the mentality and the psychology of the other players we're going to be facing against, and around insurance. So nobody wants to take a zeroed out Kajel. No one wants to take these. They think they're bad. They know that they're bad. But everybody would like to take a, a zeroed current because they know that they can repair it and sell it or repair it and use it because it's so cheap to repair. Now, this is a double-edged sword and actually ends up being an advantage for the Gajel because if you survive, obviously you get to repair your armor and so the current is better. But if you die and somebody else takes your armor, then they get the advantage of repairing the current, whereas you don't, right? And so if you run the Gajel, you're actually more likely to get your armor back and then to be able to repair it with Prapor and then go in again than if you run the current. And I think this is an interesting effect economically, and it gives us a reason as to why we might want to run the Gajel. Right, let's just switch back to Excel, because what I've done here is run some scenarios based on some assumptions around the armor itself. So in terms of what is important is our survival rate. Uh, here we're assuming 50% whether the armor gets damaged when you survive. So at the moment, I'm assuming 50% of the time the armor gets damaged when you survive. If it gets damaged, we're going to say that it goes to zero and needs to be fully repaired. And then in terms of insurance, what we were talking about before, I've implemented in terms of the Corund with a 50% insurance return rate and Gajel with a 75% insurance return rate. So some people will steal the Corund and some people will steal the Gajel, but generally speaking, if people see one of those Gajels that is zeroed out, they're just not going to take it and you're going to get it back. So let's run this through the first scenario. So here we've got the, the current. So what I've done is kind of like a little flow diagram just to demonstrate it in a probability tree. So we're saying half the time we survive and half the time we die. Of those survivals, the armor comes back undamaged or we've just got it on us and it's undamaged 50%. 50% of the time it gets damaged and we'll need to repair it. So overall, 25% of the time we have to pay nothing. 25% of the time we're going to have to pay 10,000 rubles to repair the armor. Now on the other branch, the, the death branch, 50% of the time we're going to get it returned in insurance. That was the, the thing that we specified up here. Twenty five, And so that's 25% of the overall, which is again another 10,000 because we're going to have to repair it from zero. When we die and it gets stolen, this is an, the final 25% chunk, the final quarter of our probability. And what does this cost us? Well, this costs us the entire price of the armor because we're going to have to buy a whole new one for 100,000. So we take an average of all of these using these probabilities, this gets us to 30,000 rubles per raid, which seems pretty cheap. And this is based obviously on the assumptions that we've made and comes out to quite a nice figure. So if we then flick down to the similar scenario using exactly the same assumptions with the Gajel, except for insurance return rate, we're saying that the same thing, survive and undamaged, survive and damaged, die and have it returned and die and stolen. The only difference here is between return to 75% and stolen 25%. When it gets returned on the Gajel, or when it's damaged in raid, we have to pay 23,000 to repair it. And when it gets stolen completely, we have to pay 123 for the, the new one. And the answer here is 29.75. So it's actually very, very similar. The crux of this is that we're saying that the Gajel, you're going to get returned 75% of the time. Maybe it's too much. I think at this point in the wipe, I think this is probably about right. But you might disagree with me. And so this might change the answer that you might want to get to. Now clearly this changes depending on the survival rate that we have and what's interesting about this is that because the Corund is so much cheaper, imagine if we had a 100% survival rate, let's just put that in for a moment, that makes the Corund five 
thousand rubles per run because you get it back or well, you survive every time only half of the time does it get damaged and you repair it for 10 so it's half of 10 it's five uh, whereas the gazelle is a bit more expensive because it costs more and we're then going to have to go and buy some more which i didn't actually include in this the number of times that you can re-repeat the, the armor purchase so the gazelle is actually even worse than it says in here because our model is quite simplistic let's take that back to 50. so as we move along to this section here this is using a survival rate of 25 percent so this is exactly the same scenario now, the Corrund comes out at 42.5 thousand rubles because it gets stolen slightly more, whereas the Gagelle only comes out at 38,875 rubles because it gets stolen so much less and you get to repair it. What's interesting about this is if you set the survival rate to zero, then the Gagelle is actually better value because people steal the run so much more often and the Gagelle comes back and you get to repair it and use it again. So really the takeaway from this is if you feel like you have a higher survival rate, you want to be using the Karund armor because you're going to get the ability to repair it over and over and over again. You're going to survive more raids with it and you're going to be able to use it over and over. This is even more slanted than it says in the in the model as well because the Karund, you can repeatedly repair it like maybe 20 times or something before durability even becomes a problem. If you're a player that dies a lot and has a low survival rate, I actually would recommend the Gagelle because you're going to get them back so much more often and you can repair them with Prapor and overall it's going to actually still be fairly cost effective if you don't have to buy a whole new armor all the time. Now this might get tilted a bit more if we were near the beginning of the wipe because your items and equipment all get stripped continuously when you're at the start of the wipe because everybody is just trying to take anything. But the one good thing about the Gagelle in some ways is that repairing it is quite expensive and so it's really not even worth repairing it and selling it back to Ragman or repairing it and selling it back to Fence. It just doesn't make sense. So even then, you might well find that you get the Gagelles back too. Whereas late in the wipe, I really think that the Gagelle is a good contender for something that you should be running, especially if your survival rate isn't super, super, super good. So I hope this has been interesting and useful for you. I think we've gone through pretty much all of the parameters in terms of armor and why you'd want to run one over another. And you could use this framework really for anything, to be honest. And uh, You can use the same arguments to decide why you want to run tier 5 versus tier 4 or tier 6 versus tier 5. It doesn't just have to be the Quran versus the Gagelle. What really matters is kind of the broad framework around the decision making about why you'd make one decision over another um, and I'll probably link this spreadsheet actually I'll put a Google Drive link up or something so if you do want to play around with it you can it's pretty straightforward it's just a simple probability tree but then you get the idea about what might happen if you have 100% or 0% survival rate and be able to fiddle with some of the numbers maybe you think the insurance rates are, should be changed so anyway if you enjoyed the video please do consider dropping a like and a sub to the channel it really helps out with visibility if you haven't done so already you can also follow me on Twitter and Twitch to catch me when I'm live until then, I'll see you next time and have fun in your raids.